two rusty metal plates that slide apart form a crude door. It's been here under the boardwalk for a while. Who's there? What do you mean, who's there? It's me, Kim. Stop playing around and help me get this door open. The doors seem to be on rails, but they've gotten jammed. You grab a side and put some strength into prying it open. With the help of your partner, the two metal panels slide open with a creak. Huh. I hope no one dangerous heard that. How did you even get there? After you climbed up to the roof, you mean? There's a maintenance entrance under the boardwalk. It's next to a drain pipe, possibly a stone drain. It was easy to miss before. He's quite proud of himself. The maintenance entrance. So pedestrian. Yes, yes. It's cool to risk your life climbing rickety ladders. Anyway, let's investigate these passages. depicted gazes at you with sad eyes a plaque reads k mazov there is a spider web in the lower left corner of the portrait years worth of dust is shaken off the full head of hair matched by an ample mustache and sideburns look a bit silly someone crouches heels digging into wet sand hands sweep across the sand grains stick into the frayed skin of the fingertips an old man sits on a slab of concrete and taps his fingers against the glass of a scope. You shudder. Look, Kim. It's Comrade Mazov. Yes, I can see that. Looks like some communists were hiding out here. They left a long time ago. The lieutenant does not seem to share your enthusiasm. A long time ago? How long? Half a century. This was probably part of the network of defense posts the communards built against the amphibious landing. I think the purpose of this bunker was to produce propaganda. It would have had radio equipment back then, but that's all been looted. What's with all these secret weapon catches and secret bunkers? We have found a lot of those lately. I guess what most people think of as history tends to linger in rundown neighborhoods. Martinez being what it is, no one has gone through the trouble of cleaning out the old bunkers. Good hiding place for someone who's up to no good. Maybe I should move in here. Seems cozy. I won't stand in your way, but only after we are through with this case. Could it be connected to the Mazov bust we found in the students' room? Millions of depictions of Mazov have been produced. They're not all connected. Besides, that looked like some student. The youths always go for this kind of stuff. Could someone have stopped through here recently? You mean like Ruby? No, I think we've stumbled on a piece of history. Thank <laughs> you. 
here it is again, like a swarm of hornets buzzing under your scalp. A strange tingling you can almost smell. Lieutenant, do you feel something? No. What do you mean? A ghost. Hmm. Either way, we ought to be careful. There were footprints back there, and I'm pretty sure they were fresh. Hold on. You really don't feel anything? No, but you are the sensitive one. It's not a quib. The situation is dangerous. He trusts your gut feeling on this. We saw them too. Footprints with the right soul were smooth. Looks like our suspect. If she isn't here, we need to plan our next step carefully. What do you mean? Once we detain a credible suspect, who knows what the Union and the Wild Pines will do. We'll set in motion events we have no control over. You will upset the balance of power in Martinez. The deadlock between the company and the Union will destabilize. This part of town is a fine clockwork puzzle. Disturb its peace and it will start breaking down uncontrollably. Keep calm. Go over the whole situation in detail. We found out there were plans to take the harbor. Maybe we should tell Joyce about it? I leave that to your judgment. You already know what I think about cross-pollinating information like this. It's dangerous, but... He just can't be sure. Maybe it will yield something useful. Do we think whatever happens will affect our cryptozoologists? You mean Morel? I don't see how cryptozoology and the murder investigation are connected. But the situation in the city will get tense for everyone. If it gets that tense, the amateur zoologists might not be able to do their job. Well, how bad do you think things could get? Well, we are not responsible for what we can't predict, are we? I don't think the entire city will be raised to the ground. Let's try not to worry, he thinks. If you can't predict it, there's nothing you could have done. What do you think is waiting for us there? I think I see a cavern. Maybe more cellars? I think we've been careful enough. We still have the element of surprise. I wouldn't be so sure. You haven't exactly been sneaking. Or maybe not. Either way, once we go deeper, there will be no turning back. pretty uncomfortable right now. Don't move too much or fight it. That'll just make it worse. Can't say it's a pleasure, officer. I was really hoping not to make your acquaintance. But here we are. The voice coming through the world of pain is not malicious. She doesn't want to hurt you, but she has to. Don't focus on the pain. Focus on doing your job. Tell her she's under arrest. You're under arrest! Really now? Check this out. You're overwhelmed with a new surge of violent static. It feels like a blood vessel exploded in your brain. What's happening to me? I'm using a pale latitude compressor. You and your partner have been caught in its field. The explosion of static you're hearing is the ULAN frequency. Blasted from that pale emitter that Angus mentioned. I saw your equation. It's full on frequency. Saw my equations? You've been sniffing through my lorry, right? I expected as much. I am a bit surprised you knew what you were looking at. Yes. 
You should probably check out Tim. That's what good partners do. Right behind you, officer. The torment Lieutenant Kitsuragi is experiencing is worse than your own, but he's slowly beginning to recover. A pale latitude compressor is used to sort of make the pale more manageable. With a lot of these, you can force a radio signal grid on the pale, literally crunch the distance across it. Signals are relayed across a series of repeater stations fixed to buoys. Not a fun job manning those stations. All alone out there in the pale, people lose their minds in just a few years. Sounds like she knew someone who used to man one of those stations. But she won't tell you about her. Boy, you're one empathetic police officer to have guessed even that right now. So, what we are experiencing is that the concentration of radio waves. Precisely. This is an industrial strength for Abeloid. It's meant for forcing dimensions on something that doesn't have them. Needless to say, the frequencies used are out of this world. At the upper limit is the large prime number generator station. It's used specifically for pale latitude compression. That's why you may be hearing some numbers. But you might also hear, or think you're hearing, local radio chatter. She's been holed up in here for a while with no one to talk to. Keep her talking, and you just might get an opportunity to break the loose. How'd you get your hands on this thing? I built it myself. And she's proud of it too. As she ought to be. This is way beyond your abilities. That's illegal. I'm guessing it's patented. But we are beyond that, aren't we? Oh yeah. Way beyond. Will I stay like this forever? No. Once I shut down the compressor, the pain will end. It may take a few minutes for you to steady yourself, though. It's a bit like waking out of a very confusing dream. Have you experienced the compressor yourself? Yeah, I stuck my head in there before using it on you. It seemed like the ethical thing to do. Can't say that I enjoyed it. The field was weaker, but I can imagine what you're going through. This is all great, but let's talk about the man who was killed. Yeah, let's not talk about that shit. You were hunting me and fell into my trap instead. That's all there is to say about it. So she thinks of you as hunters, not cops, and of herself merely as prey. Please, could you just turn it down so I can ask you something? If you've got something really important to say, you can do it through the white noise. God damn it. Fine. If you really want to talk, I can dial it down. I've also got a gun, by the way. She's carrying. 
carry in a two-barrel front loader. Remain careful. Well, it doesn't feel much better, but you can form sentences now. Thinking doesn't seem to hurt as much. Just keep her talking, and you'll get through this. There's only three meters between you and the machine. If you keep her distracted for long enough, maybe. Be careful when you make your move. That'll be it for questions. Bide your time. How did you know we were coming? I heard you in the passages, and I've been preparing for quite a while. By hiding bullets in their floorboards? So you found my shack, huh? I'm not surprised. Her tone is bitter. She thinks she's been betrayed. She didn't rat you out, by the way. Isabel, the washerwoman. So nice. That's one knife I didn't want to find to my back. As opposed to the other knives she's finding there now. Hardy for one. Preparing for the worst? I was. Before I caught you in the pale latitude compressor. I'm fine now. That's her admitting the bullet was an emergency exit. It was dark in the shack. The waves outside had calmed down. She looked at the loaded gun. Then she cracked the barrel open and took the bullet out. Not today. Did you shoot Lily? No, I didn't do it. I only helped stage the lynching. Though I doubt that makes much of a difference to you. So she says she didn't do it. And she doesn't trust you. Is it you specifically? Or the citizen's militia that she distrusts? Who ratted me out, by the way? Was it Titus? No. He wouldn't have broken first. Clasha. She's clearly a gender traitor. Oh. Well, I guess I always knew she was a survivor above all else. But she couldn't have known I was on the coast. How did you find me? Your first guess wasn't entirely off. Titus and his boys. He told us you were on the coast. Even now, Kim is a paragon of professionalism. He is trying to make a clean cut of telling her she was betrayed. Well, fuck. Those guys liked me, I know it. But this is what happens to people whom people like. A dull despair is creeping into her voice. How the fuck did the rest of you get by? Does she mean that you're not a person whom other people like? Wait, wasn't it you who called me the human can opener? It's not personal. I opened them up. I did, didn't I? Now you've come for me. Fuck them all the same. That did make her forgive them. A little. I do it by asking questions. And I have some for you. Like what? I already told you I didn't do it. A strong moral compass. She still wants the opportunity to make a place for herself. Would you say that Lely was a likable person? I didn't like him. Hardened mercenaries aren't particularly likable types. You don't feel sympathy for mercs? It's hard work. Plenty of broken people who don't come with that kind of body count. Besides, they're paid well for what they do. There's nothing more personal that you had against him? Perhaps he's Wait, with women? You think I was envious of his conquests? Look, pussy's not a problem for me. And definitely not a reason to off someone. See her confident gaze. Her toned arms. Yeah, she wouldn't have had much trouble in the intimacy department. Did you feel protective of the Union? Yeah, sure. And I didn't like wild pines sending in those foreign hirelings. Me and a fuck ton of other people around here. I hate to be the bearer of bad tidings, but I don't think she's perjuring herself. She didn't hate him, okay? I have other questions. I'm listening. Do you have an alibi for when Lily was shot? Man, I was with the boys the whole night. 
I hope they at least bothered to impress that upon you. There were 10 minutes they couldn't account for. You mean the length of a toilet break? That wouldn't even have been enough time. Hold on, no one takes a 15 minute leak. Look, fuck you man. I might also have stopped by the bar. She speak of truth. Our investigation has shown that 15 minutes was just enough time to commit the murder. Wow, now I'm curious. Please, explain. Play pinball much? No. Not since I was 14 and hanging out in the only diner in Dardan. Haven't been into low risk, no reward games since moving to the city. Somewhere on the outskirts of Forberg, a scrawny teenage girl stands by the side of the road, greeting passing vehicles with a callous thumb turned up. She's tired. She wants to leave, but she knows she will come back. Why? There are some mysterious pinball machines in some pretty mysterious room in the Warlink. Yeah, and probably some ghosts from the time of the suzerain. I'm not really interested in supernatural mysteries. Wait, what kinds of mysteries interest you then? Not murder mysteries either, if that's what you're thinking. She looks you in the eye, impassively, making it clear that she's not planning to comment on the matter any further. That's a shame, because I happen to be a paranatural detective. Cool, they said a ghost cop after me. Congratulations. What about elevators? Do you like elevators? What the fuck do elevators have to do with anything? Do you or don't you? Not particularly. Why not? Why are you so hung up on elevators? That's a pretty good question, actually. She clearly doesn't know anything about the secret passage. Not even quaint old rickety ones? I'm not really into old shit for old shit's sake. God damn it! Look, there's a secret way from the ground floor of the whirling to the roof. Don't know it, but also... Evaluating your competence as a police officer. The shot couldn't have come from the roof, or we would have all heard it downstairs. She has a barn there. No one mentioned. That didn't go super well. You've got to lay something better on her. You have a gun. And? Where'd you get it? The gun store. What gun store? Trigger Happy Jack. Really? Trigger? What did you think? That I'm going to squeal on my gun supplier? Sorry, not that kind of gal. I see it's a front loader. Do you have another gun somewhere? Sure don't. The breech loader? No. This is such a white out. I can't quite tell what kind of gun is it. A Nachtway 80 front loader. Two barrels. Not really what you were looking for, I'm guessing. There's other evidence I want to ask you about. Yeah, evidence. You liked Klasia a lot. I considered her a good friend, yeah. Are you a good old liker? <laughs> what the hell, man? Yeah, why not? I've gotten worse. Her hand slipped from the dial of the compressor for a moment, almost turning it down. Then she put her hand back. Not yet. Not yet. Is peeping one of your hobbies? Wow. Pissing, pinball, and now peeping. I'm just not following your insinuations, detective. There's a hole in the wall. You can see into Classy's room. I wouldn't blame you if you... If I want to stare at a pretty girl, I can pick one up at a bar. Or, worst case scenario, look at a naughty photo. Who has time to go skulking about the whirling, drilling holes in walls? Clashy looks like a girl in one of your posters. She seems to be your type. 
What the fuck, man? She's everyone's type. She's your type. Are you sure you're not the one who was excited about the people? She's beginning to suspect I've broken into her lorry now. Actually, uh, I did get pretty excited. Cool, man, cool. I'm glad you got off on it. What the fuck are we talking about? So you haven't been watching Kratz into a hole in a wall? Nope. Look, she has an effect on people. That je ne sais quoi that makes it impossible not to look at her when she walks into the room and very difficult to look away. But travel enough and you realize, for the same reason that she's everyone's type as an object of desire, she's not irreplaceable. Right on. Wrong. That kind of pussy is never replaceable. But you want it to be more than just friends. Oh, so that's where you were going with this. She said you wanted to run away with her. Well, that's a very sentimental way of putting it. We both had pasts who didn't want to catch up with us, and we enjoyed listening to music together. Why not go on a road trip? The lieutenant watches her expectantly, occasionally shaking from the pain. Okay, fine. I was into her. Quasi was into me too for a time, I know it. We even fooled around once. And yeah, after that I thought maybe we could make a go of it. Glazia only said they may be kissed. Someone is lying here. She touched that radiant beauty, that silver wellspring of desire. Wait, Crash said you only kissed. If that's what she wants on the record, so be it. I'm not about to go into details for you to jerk off to later. Seriously, just move on. But I do want details, actually. Really? Is that blood on the ground before you? Are your ears bleeding? Yeah, really? Okay, then what happened? She rejected me with some wishy-washy bullshit about how she was confused because she felt so close to me and valued my friendship so much and how guilty she felt for leaving me off. I knew that wasn't the whole story, but thought, fine. I'll take it, move on. No ill will then. It wasn't a problem for her. Clasha said you got very angry when she started seeing Lily. Threatened her. Yeah, one time when we'd both been drinking, I said some heated things about how dangerous her patterns with men were. I was a little worried to blow it out of proportion in her head. All the drugs she was doing can make you feel like you're living in a DeLorean tragedy. By the way, DeLorean tragedies are still held in high regard for innovation in language and motifs. They are also known for overwrought emotions leading to catastrophic outcomes. And despite everything, you helped her by staging the lynching? Yeah, the girl seemed terrified. The Merc was beyond caring what happened to his mortal coil. It was a no-brainer. There other things I ask about. Go ahead. It's your body. And why too, he thinks. But keep on. This must be done. Do you like to hang out on rooftops? Who doesn't? Oh, you probably mean Claudia's rooftop. Sure I've hung out there. She's got this great antenna. Is that the only reason you hang out on the roof? The view's pretty bomb, too. But you might say the antenna was the main attraction there, yeah. Along with Faja. What's so great about her antenna? It's very powerful. I used it to tune into RCM frequencies. That's how I knew to be prepared for your arrival. So you're sure you didn't shoot the mark from the roof? Yes, I'm sure. And anyway, as I said before, the shot had to have come from afar. Did you leave any flowers for Clasha on the roof? No. 
Gifts of flowers and candy aren't really my style. Not even wildflowers? Maybell, for example? Nope. But Clasher was mourning. I never did understand why, when someone dies, a hothouse's worth of flowers has to die too. Okay, so you didn't leave Maybell. No, I did not. You're running drugs for the Union. I've been through your lorry. So, part of Gold Tommy fucked me over too. Never trust a musician. That really comes as a blow to her. Maybe twist the knife, just in case. Make her more desperate. Yeah, I made him talk. Yeah, that figures. What now? You're going to arrest me for drug trafficking? She's more upset than she lets on. You're a criminal. I can't trust anything you say. That's your prerogative. You had a financial incentive to kill the Merc. No. Gifts of flowers and candy aren't really my style. She deliberately avoided the name of the mob she worked for. You might be able to find this out later. I got lucky being a dispatcher. Never had to do any of the really dirty work myself. This gun has only been used for self-defense against serious scum. Then, it's going to be easier to reach the machine now. But you're treating us with it. Based on what I've heard about you, you are serious scum. There's a sinister note in her voice. Even with the gun and the compressor, she's afraid of you. Okay, let's take a step back. Yeah? Where? More. More questions before doing anything. Damn it. Destroy that thing already. Who killed the Merc if it wasn't you? How should I know? As I keep saying, he already had a bullet in his head when I got to him, and there hasn't been any useful gossip over the radio. Those rings around her eyes, her tired voice. She's been staying up late, listening in on the conversations crisscrossing Martinez. What is radio? You've been following the case? Who hasn't? You know, I can still see him there, in Claus's room, lying on his side. He was still warm, but the bluish light coming through the broken window made him look as though he'd been dead for a good long while. Clausia didn't want to turn the lamp on. She was afraid of another shot. What happened Sunday night? Tell me your version. She eyes you warily, as though gauging your sincerity. She's refusing to adopt the demeanor of a cornered animal. A leader with no one to lead. She still wants to retain some control of the situation. It's okay. We just want to... Uh, uh. Alright, don't kill yourself over it. I was shooting the shit with Hardy and the boys over a few beers, like always. Then Klasia comes in, all pale and shuddering. She sits down with a drink, trying to steady her nerves. So I grab a seat next to her. Wait. Did she also seem high to you? Oh yeah, super. But I didn't think too much of it at first. I'd seen her party hard before. This woman has seen people OD. Clausia wasn't quite there yet. So I won. Clausia said you know, knew something was wrong immediately. No, I really didn't. She's not that easy to read. I just assumed she'd done too much blow. It wouldn't be a first for her. But, no such luck. She was in some deep shit. She asked me to come upstairs. The merc she'd been going with was lying on the bedroom floor, dead. I knew she couldn't get the authorities involved, so yeah. You made it look like it had been hanged. Clasha said you seem to have a plan prepared when you got there. What? No. Faking a lynching was her idea. She looks shaken. She wasn't surprised to be ratted out, but framed. Her idea? Yeah, in cold blood. 
It really surprised me how quickly she was able to get a hold of herself once we got up there. It was like she was another person. The party girl was gone. You can see it. Her lips, though still white, don't seem to tremble as much anymore. She moves with focus and deliberation. She asked me to help her drag him into the shower so she could wind the shower head around his neck to fake lividity. Then she dressed him while I went to get the Hardy Boys. Colossia knew exactly what she was doing. You can't remain calm under pressure otherwise. She lied to you about that, too. Shower head. Resourceful. Yeah. I wasn't sure whether to admire her or be disturbed. Do you think she killed Lily herself? As I keep telling you cops, we didn't hear anything downstairs. No gunshot, nothing. But even if this is true, weren't you worried that this might lead to... War? The thought crossed my mind. But the mercenary's death was going to have repercussions either way. Although the way things are going... She doesn't want to talk about this, but not because she has something to hide. She doesn't want the guilt. Eh, fuck it. I'm not responsible for these people after what they did to me. Her grip on the gun is tight. Her arms turned. Her posture solid. Marta lays lost a valuable defender. If you didn't kill him, why hide? I saw you roll into town. I wasn't about to stick around for questioning by a goddamn La Puta Madre agent. So this is what she was scared to tell Titus. This cop this cop. That strange, distant fear is getting close now. It's a fear of yourself. What do you mean, La Puta Madre agent? Yes, you. Everyone says you're his peon, his human can opener. Oh, fucking hell. Me. Fucking hell. And why me? Here through the white noise. It's especially bad suddenly. Felt like a vein exploded. Who's everyone? How do you know this? Everyone in Jamrock. The cops, the criminals. Why do you think I'm holed up in here with a goddamn death ray waiting for you? If she knows that about you, she must know your real name too. Tell me, what's my name? If you know that about me, you must know my name. Harry Dubois. One corrupt motherfucker with a disco pants and a funny tie. Agent to la puta madre. Did someone mention a fucked up tie? I call bullshit. You're too crazy to be corrupt. So she knows your name. That doesn't mean you're on the tape. Criminals make up bogey and stories about cops all the time. All of this just means that you're effective. Criminals know you and are scared of you. I don't know. Sounds pretty convincing to me. La puta madre. I've heard of La puta madre. This is dangerous, right? Is that a joke or a threat? I'm guessing both. Yes, of course. Are you scared yet? Of you? No, not really. A man in a white suit walks through a garden coaxed from soil that had once been covered in asphalt. A city block closed off from the rest of the city by dark buildings. Rows and rows of puppies, most of which have lost their pink blue, flatten his steps. The man looks around, then up at the sky, sighs. Taken out of night, he crouches at the end of one flower bed. He scores a seabot very gently. Milky sap begins to ooze out. The pain comes over you again. What did you do to this madre anyway? You've been to my lorry. You think the biggest player in Jamrock appreciates competition? Now I have Harry can opener in my lair. Fucking Titus. I thought we had an agreement, she thinks. This was not supposed to happen. She's not going to change her mind that easily. 
she still perceives you as a threat. Wait, one thing, possibly small, but she said you rolled into town. Is that you singular or plural? She might know something. When I came into town, was there anyone with me? Yeah, you had your death squad with you. What happened to them anyway? Who was in this squad? Well, it wasn't this scrawny dude. You had two guys and a lady. The guys looked pretty buff. Lady wasn't bad either. What else can you tell me? One of the guys seemed chipper, a blonde. The other had a brooding something or other about him. And the woman... The woman was the only one in uniform. All were carrying. That sound about right? No idea who these people are, literally. Satellite officer Vic Mayer looks out of the window grimly, then puts his coffee down and turns to patrol officer Mino. We can either take a room here in the world or go home for today. Let's go home, Jean. Nothing's going to happen today, she responds quietly. Jean takes his blonde wig off. Call Heidelstein. He can give us a ride. I think I know them. They're in Martinez. Christian, lock, set. Don't leave me here. Please delete. Fantastic. I've got to get on the road. Then you can go find your friends. Unless you have anything pressing to ask me. Do you know about the bunker next door? What bunker? The communist hideout back there. Don't know anything about it. No one's been around since I set up camp. But I'm sure I'm not the first vagabond to... You've got to act soon. This is getting bad. Keep calm. Breathe in. After the plane recedes, it's a little clearer. You did it. The compressor lies broken on its side. It's quiet in your head again. It still hurts like hell. But you're under arrest. She looks at the machine, assessing the damage. Her hand trembles. Oh, fuck it. What are you doing? Problem solving. Ma'am, put the gun down. That's not the solution to your problems. You are. Oh, yes, it is. She's truly desperate. She thinks she has no other options. You need to give her options. What options? You know. Maybe I can still talk her out of it. This is how you talk her out of it. It's the only scenario in which she lives. Please. Just walk away. She stares at you. Frozen, the gun still in her mouth, eyes filled with dark intensity. Then something shifts in her. Gratitude, doubt. She's still ready to go. Her neck and shoulders relax, and her grip on the gun loosens. You don't have to do this. You're not cornered. I'm letting go. Day of miracles. I'll take it. She runs past you, then past the lieutenant, and disappears into the darkness of the tunnel. Good call. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I would have done the same had I not been incapacitated. He couldn't take it like you. It irks him. Then he gets over it. I think she didn't do it. Her tent. We should check it out.
The plain red tent stands by dispassionately. It was pitched by practiced hands. She's used to camping out. The tent looks old, but well maintained. In the darkness of the tent, a rolled up sleeping bag, cooking utensils, some books, and a kerosene lamp. It reeks of cigarettes. Assorted soft covers, mostly pulp horror. A motor carriage lies buried in the snow on one cover. On another, a ghost airship. You also see a collection of radio enthusiast magazines. See anything? Rager Monthly, Journal of Material Science. More technological digest. One of the magazines doesn't have images on the cover. It's not a magazine. It's a leather notebook. A notebook? You pocket the worn brown leather journal. A trusted friend left behind. We should read this immediately. Like, right now. A thick journal. The cover is worn like someone used to carry it around in their back pocket. It's made of full grain leather. The lower left corner of the back cover sports an embossed brand name, Schneller. Schneller is a stationary brand from Gottwald, beloved among architects and engineers. She's got good taste and must have taken whatever she recorded here seriously. The journal falls open. About two thirds of its ruled pages have been filled. The large cursive of someone who writes quickly and confidently. Perhaps too confidently. Many phrases and even paragraphs have been crossed out with tiny corrections scrawled above and in the margins. It's a mix of logistical notes, diagrams and personal reflections, all dated. It's good she left in a hurry. We could learn a lot from this. What kind of logistics? Hard to tell exactly. It's mostly noted down in code. Looks like contact information, quantities, directions. There could be useful information about local operations in those notes. We have a junior sergeant at my station who's good with codes. I can give this to her after we finish this. What are the diagrams are? Esoteric radio technology. The most recent ones probably pertain to the latitude compressor, sketches, calculations of distance and density. You make out a familiar spiral shape. Anything personal? Short, wry observations of people and places. Probably a way to pass the time on the road. Also, what appears to be attempts to sort through some difficult decisions. There are a few passages with many questions in them. The way some of those question marks trail off into ellipsis, she was going through a tough time. Staff issues, always tough on the leadership. You smell traces of betrayal. How far back do the entries go? The first entry is from August 2nd of last year. It reads simply, I know my position is precarious. All I can do is make myself as useful as I can while looking for a way out. Remember, no one is indispensable. What did you write the day Lily died? Nothing on March 4th. March 5th, though, well, that's bound to come back and bite me in the ass. I'm bad at this. Loyal to a fault. Except, but that's another matter entirely. She is referring to betraying a previous employer. Does this suggest she did it in self-defense? Anything about La Puta Madre? That name isn't mentioned as far as you can tell. Small wonder. Would you talk about La Puta Madre in your journal? You do see an M though. La Puta Madre? M is mentioned on March 9th and March 15th. Read the entry from March 9th first. Great. M's peon is coming to town. No doubt to investigate the lynching. But also, I feel it in my gut to finally put a bullet in my head while I'm napping in my lorry or on a smoke break. Well, I won't stick around just to twist my own neck by constantly looking over my shoulder. 
Then again, isn't that what I've been doing ever since I got the call? The call? Did M call her personally? Why? Were you supposed to find her, even apart from the investigation then? On M's request? No, you wouldn't do something like this. This must be a mistake. You didn't follow through. You should have shot her in the head. This is a coincidence. I would never kill people for a mob boss. The thought steadies your nerves. The journal stops shaking in your hand. Read the entry from March 12th. Been holed up here for three days now. I'm used to being alone and all, but I don't know when I'll be able to leave, or if I'll be ratted out. They will rat me out, of course. I've made it a point to believe in the best in people, the boys, for example. But experience tells me. Did M feel truly betrayed by me? I was feeling threatened. He'd have to know if he threatened people, they'd take measures to protect themselves. Even I know that. Economic measures, first of all. Gotta make a living, right? I can still hear his voice in the receiver. Taste the plastic. The entry ends abruptly. The call was a courtesy. He must have held her in high regard to personally tell her he knew about her plan to run drugs for the competition. What's the most recent entry? The most recent entry is from today. It reads, Even when I leave here, if I leave here alive, what's my next move? Staging a lynching is a crime, even if I'm not accused of murder on top of that. Forever on the run. Not really my idea of the open road. Man, I was really looking forward to winning. It looks like she might have been... framed? That would be a first. Or a fourth. But who's counting? He thinks. Very rarely does anyone actually get framed. If she didn't do it, then maybe it's good that we didn't catch her? I wouldn't go so far as to say that. We have other reasons to arrest her. Besides, I'm not sure her life as a fugitive is going to be much better than with us. Especially if she has problems with the Madre. Kim, am I really a La Puta Madre agent? Ah, no, I don't think you are. Ask someone in your precinct if you want to be sure. He truly does not believe you are. Perhaps he shouldn't be so trusting. His trust is well placed. You aren't. You can feel it. Then who do you think killed the Merc? Classy was the one who pointed the finger at Ruby. Perhaps she was trying to steer us away from herself, or... But no one heard the shot. Maybe she had an accomplice. Either way, we need to keep an eye on her. One thing is for certain. We have business back in the whirling and rags. Questions to ask. We should get to it. Something tells you you should be extra careful from now on. 